The goal here is to show you an example of OAuth2 in Node.js uh, using both Facebook Connect and LDS Connect as an example. So I'm going to go to ldsconnect.org, click on the API tab, and what I've got here is kind of a choose your own adventure OAuth. So select your back end, select your front end currently, back end, just Node, front end, either jQuery or Angular. So I'll go ahead and select that back end. I'm going to git clone it. Git clone. I'm going to go into that directory that I just cloned. I need to do npm install. And then while that's installing, I'm going to go ahead and choose the AngularJS front end. I'll be ready to get clone that as well. You can see in the readme it tells you like you just need to clone your your back end, clone your front end, run the server, and then go to that domain. There's already real SSL certs as well as real tokens for Facebook and LDS Connect, but they're domain tokens. They only work on the that uh, domain here that points to localhost and they only work with SSL. So I'm cloning the Angular project into public. So there it is. I need to go in there and power install. And then once that's over, I'll pop D. Now I will run, I'll let you know, I'm running node um, 1035, I think 1036 is out. I tried this with both Node 11, 16, and IOJS 1.1, but there seems to be a problem with uh, like a bug in the SSL certificate chain. So the, the basic example without SSL running on the server works, but somehow some of the chains get mixed up. Um, but SSL is important, so I'm going to do this example on 10.3.5. So we just open it up here. This is my nice Angular app. I've uh, just taken the seed project, put a little bit, bit of bootstrap on it, just lightly seasoned. And then you can see you can connect with Facebook. I've already authenticated, you know, done the little allow dialog. So comes up with uh, my credentials there. I'll log out. I'll log back in with LDS Connect instead. And you can see that it works. So let's take a peek inside. Um, let's see, where should I start? Let's just take a look at the Facebook example first. So I've got a function here where I'm passing in the Express app, the passport object, and then the config for Facebook. And then I create um, a passport strategy, which I arbitrarily name FB Strategy 1. And it takes in that conf.id and conf.secret, um, which are, they're just, you know, I created a Facebook app set it for this local.ldsconnect.org on port 8043 HTTPS and so you know you can use it it's just a dummy app to make this quicker just you know get clone run works right and uh, you know it's really simple I don't do anything there's no database storage or, or anything of that nature it's just to prove hey you can do this that's really all it is um, what is important is our dialog, this slash auth slash Facebook, that's what opens up the dialog. And then um, slash auth slash Facebook slash callback is what pulls this special file, oauthclose.html. Um, that's important, that's in all the front end examples. So I'll go over that in just a second. but. Normally, you see people do a redirect here, but that takes the user out of their flow. Well, we, so, so what I do instead is I serve, serve back this specially crafted HTML file that is going to then communicate via JavaScript from one window to the other um, to let the other window know that the login either completed successfully or that it failed. So we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Um, so nothing too fancy here. And then I need to move out the LDS Connect stuff in the similar way to Facebook. So by the time you actually watch this video, I'll probably have done that. Um, but there, you know, test keys for LDS Connect. And then these functions uh, are just how 
you could get the access token or the profile ID in case you happen to be using a different framework. Um, this LDS Connect proxy needs those two functions. And this just proxies the API from LDS Connect to your local app so you can make the same API calls. That way, when I do get the OAuth 2 uh, client side only auth working, um, it'll just be changing a couple of strings and then you won't even need the server implementation anymore. But uh, for now, I mean, that's it's already set up for you, so it's not like you gotta do any extra work. This is just a stupid MIMDB style session storage. So again, nothing special there. And then same thing as Facebook, I have LDS strategy one. Um, and then I do specify the profile URL. Um, specifically, that's part of one of the parameters that the LDS Connect strategy takes. Mm, yeah, and that was it. So it's pretty simple. And the rest of the stuff is just um, express initialization and um, passport initialization. I don't think there's anything else special. Oh, this part got moved down here. Those callbacks. But they're the same as they are in Facebook. And there's where I'm passing in the Facebook ID and the Facebook secret. And uh, yeah, that's the whole file. So nothing fancy. And then if we look under public, um, the real magic with the OAuth bit is this right here. So because I, I know that all of my backends follow this API, slash auth, slash name of auth, slash callback. Oh, excuse me. I can call window.opener complete login with the name of the strategy. So it'll be grabbing either oh excuse me again, Facebook or LDS Connect. And then the ref. And so that's either gonna have a code in it, like a it's gonna it's gonna show uh, the OAuth code or it's gonna show an error. So that's how we know whether it's uh, an error or not. And and there's just a couple of different methods of doing this here. You see um, I try to close it this way. I try to call that function. Um, there's just some hacky things between uh, iOS, web views, and then regular browsers. Uh, this little snippet is, is just a fancy way to say, you know, try a couple of different ways to connect to the, the tab that opens this tab and then pass back the, the information. And so, I mean, should work in everything except for in Explorer 6 and 7, you know. And then let's let's actually go into where the Angular is. Take a look at this. There is a, I think it's in a service. Let me just see. Did I put it in a view or a service? I think I put it under components, session, session.js. Yeah. So I'm requiring HTTP. When the page loads, I get account.json to see if there's a session. And if there is, then I attach it to the shared session object, which we'll see in the other, um, the, the views. And then I check to see if there's a photo object, and if there is, I attach that to the session. Oh, so much yawning, sorry. As headshot. And then I just call git as soon as the service loads. And then I return git and session as a shared object. So now let's go take a look at uh, what would be a best one? Make sure there's no other components. Ah, that's just the Angular seed component there. So let's take a look at profile. Okay. Uh, all this does is attach the session. Oh, I remember what I did. So I actually, in addition to the controller that is on the view, so where'd the view go? A little bit of bootstrap there. Let me just search for view. Okay, so there's our view, and that's where the, the main controllers are. But I also have another controller that's actually on the nav bar. So that's what all this is about. So because of the bootstrap and making it kind of pretty, it's takes up a lot more than, you know, here's what it was with the angular seed and then it's all this with the uh, the bootstrap and the modal. 
Um, but I have like MNC is for my nav controller. And uh, let's see, where's the actual login button? Okay, there it is. Open login. Ooh. Sorry, I just can't stop yawning. NG controller. Sorry, I'm, I'm jumping around a lot. Any, oh, there, there we go. There we go. So that's where the controller is defined. So everything in the nav bar is in that controller. And that controller, I was just being lazy, so I actually threw it in app.js. Probably should have put it in its own controller file. But so I've got that right there. So when the click happens, it does open login. Um, I should have done a directive, but again, I was being lazy, so I just did a timeout on this show animate thing to so it fades in and fades out. I didn't want to use uh, Bootstrap UI, the Angular UI, I mean, because that was just like way too much overkill for trying to do a simple example. Um, oh. Okay, that's to open the login dialog and close the login dialog. What we actually want is down here. Ah, login. Okay, so when they actually click on login, um, it re register this handler on the window, complete login, and then we do window.open slash auth slash Facebook connect or LDS connect, whatever, right? And then this complete login is, is the function we were looking at in that OAuth closed.html that gets past the name and the URL. So we just test to see if the URL got a code. If it did, then we are pretty sure the login succeeded. Otherwise, we're pretty sure it failed. That test login goes and grabs the session. So instead of doing a redirect in the browser, we instead make an HTTP request. So the total number of requests is the same, um, but we're not interrupting the user flow. We get account.json, and then um, this actually should have gotten put out into that service. Uh, so if I were to refactor this, um, I would probably call that uh, session.get instead of doing it like this here. But I did need to close the login once I've done the session.get and then update the user on the session. Um, yeah, so that's all it is. Let me take a look at the profile.html real quick. Nothing fancy, just an image, and then uh, a pre and a code tag to put out the JSON of the user session. So that's all. If this was useful for you, please go ahead and give that little thumbs up button a nice click. Also, you'll see the notes are in the comments section down below. You can either at the end of the article or right up at the top. Give it a like, tweet, plus one, whatever. Thanks.